Development. I work with an organization called Tactical Technology Collective. Um, we are a not-for-profit based uh, out of a few places. We're a small organization, about 25 people spread across, I think, four time zones or five time zones. I don't remember anymore, but um, we primarily um, are a technology resources, not-for-profit, working with uh, human rights advocates in, in many parts of the world. And um, we've been in Bangalore, we have presence in Bangalore for a little while, um, in a little office in Cooktown where I work out of. Um, and one of the things we do is, one of the things we've been doing over the last several years is doing a lot of uh, data visualization work, working with partners, working with little communities, working with uh, other NGOs. Um, most of this is uh, focused on how uh, data is used, uh, evidence is used, data and evidence are used in advocacy work. Um, of course, uh, um, all this has taught us a few things, and we are we we, we try to tell our story in in the best possible way every now and then, and that's what I think I'm going to be doing this afternoon. Uh, a quick question, how many people are going to throw things at me if I read a few paragraphs? Repeat the question, please. Okay, so it's an unconference, I shouldn't be like reading long texts, but I, my question was how many people are going to throw things at me if I decide to read a few paragraphs? I promise to keep it interesting. Okay, that's, I'm going to ignore the couple of hands that went up and do this anyway. <laughs> so, um, so that, that's that the technology collective and what I'm going to be talking about today is, uh, is something we launched very recently, a couple of weeks ago, it's called Drawing by Numbers. It's primarily a website and I'll talk more about what the website is in a minute but I'm just going to read a short piece of text from, um, there's a few paragraphs. Uh, this text is on the website, but I'm going to go ahead and read it a bit. So, um, four years ago, we started working with visualizations of evidence and advocacy. Each of our journeys in the street has led us to more questions than answers at times. Yet, we are more excited than ever about what can be done with data and design to create social change. We thought it was time to look at what we know and what we still don't know and turn it inside out. The data and design how-tos will do just that. So one of the things that goes up on the website is what we call in data and design how-tos, which is a series of articles which uh, highlight how we were... Uh, okay, that's... Yeah, I'm going to have a little while. Uh, um, uh, well, uh, it basically... Uh, published every few weeks on this site, full of observ observations and advice on data and design and activism. We try to show its inner workings, covering, covering topics like how to get data, how to organize it, how to tell stories with data. We'll also look at security and ethics of working with data, along with publishing how-tos about choosing media format, visual styles, and aesthetics. So, the way we've sectioned how we want to kind of present what present these stories are as mentoring, curating, and making, and how we got there. So we started off testing the waters to see if others were interested in this field with the release of Visualizing Information for Advocacy, a short guide written in collaboration with the very talented John Emerson. Encouraged by the positive reaction to this guide, we began to work more intensively to bring together design data and activism. We started tinkering with visualization tools, collecting inspiring and beautiful examples from some of the world's most creative activists, and listening to the needs of grassroots groups. We took a hard look at the kinds of data NGOs and researchers were working with and why its potential was often suppressed. We followed and learned from the inspiring work of others from the fields of open data, data journalism, civic hacking, art, and design. We, went, we then went further, implementing our own projects, mentoring others, testing out and honing our approach and figuring out how to teach people to realize their potential as information activists. In 2009, we began mentoring two grassroots sex worker collectives in India and Cambodia to help them pull together their own data about mistreatment faced by sex workers and to weave that data into information graphics to support the group advocacy needs. Together with our partners, we have explored how marginalized communities lacking access to sophisticated information technology skills and tools can harness the campaigning opportunities within the data that they are collecting. In 2010, we started working with women's rights activists in the Arab region aiming to inspire them with examples of information design, mapping, animation, 
culture jamming about women's rights from around the world. We spent six months collating these examples on a blog called Visual Rights. We followed this up with a workshop for 45 women's rights advocates across the Arab world. Five went on to create their own visual campaign. <coughs> we produced a range of data visualizations for print and screen with NGO partners. For example, we worked with the Anti-Slavery International to create Products of Slavery, an interactive website that visualizes data about everyday products produced in different parts of the world under conditions of slavery. Most recently, we worked with Bankwatch to visualize information about environmentally and socially harmful projects being financed or in line, of, in line with financing by the European Union. All this has added up. Over three years, we helped almost a thousand activists working on issues as diverse as corruption, domestic violence, and migration. To use evidence more effectively in their campaigns, we challenged them to figure out how to move, move beyond traditional worthy reports that no one really needs to become creative in their presentation, to be flawless in their use of evidence, and to be artful in their campaigning. OK, that's a few paragraphs I can read. <laughs> and um, so, so like I said, so we're trying to tell our story. And, and this is what uh, came out a, few week, a couple of weeks ago um, as an effort to continue telling that story. And uh, what I just read is, is a short blurb from the website under the data and design how-tos that we have just started publishing. There, this is going to be a series of articles, like I said earlier, which, uh, and we've got a couple of them up here already. Um, and a lot of it is um, work we have observed other people doing, work we have part of uh, being uh, collaborators in, and, and work that, we were nothing to do with, but just we think are, are great examples of data visualization. So this this is going to continue. There's note one and note two out there, and over the next several months, there'll be a lot a lot more articles, which I think would be of interest to anybody who works with data and and visualizing with data and everything. Um, the other thing that we do on the website is something called visual visualization tools profiling, where we look at tools that are commonly used by people all around and, and try and figure out what, what they're good for, what they're not good for, what, um, what the pros and cons are, what to look out for, what, what, what roadblocks you might, want, might run into. And, uh, and we kind of review them and profile them and write about them on the website, in, uh, which includes use cases and examples of how this tool has been effectively used. Um, so for example, this is how uh, a tool profile looks like. It's, it's our review and then what you can actually do with the tool. And one thing we take really seriously is issues around privacy and security. So we talk about how stuff is licensed, who, uh, what are the things you need to be aware of from the privacy and security point of view of, uh, of these two, and examples of work that have been done using those tools. So right now we've got, we've got like, and then this, this is basically uh, charting and graphing tools, uh, mapping uh, tools, even basic things like uh, design tools like Git, for example, uh, which most people are familiar with. But um, but this, but actually, like trying to highlight use cases of how GIMP has been used, for example, in um, in data visualization work that we we really like, and um, so yeah, some of them link to tutorials that that help you get started with tools, um, um, tutorials which help you understand terminology that you might, might not be familiar with. Um, we've also got something called the waiting room, which, which we could use help with. Is that these are tools we, we have been impressed by, but we haven't got around to profiling yet, and we'd like to. So at the moment, these links just lead straight out to, uh, to their respective websites. Um, but but the, the, those are waiting to be profiled by that people. So 
like I said, security is like of utmost concern. And one of our other projects called uh, Ono Robot, who is, who is an animated robot um, who runs around the world telling people about how to, how to use uh, te uh, technology securely um, and ad advises you about uh, privacy of your data and, and like that. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to show up drawingbynumbers.org, and it's it's a it's a website that is going to grow as we add more content and and, and visualization tool profiles into it. Um, um, and like I said, we could use help with some of that. We could um, we are we do actually have a little budget as an organization to do some micro grants for people who want to help us. Uh, continue building this. So, uh, with these are the, the, the details of this are still being worked on, and probably will go up on the site quite soon. But uh, feel free to feel free to write to us and, and ask more questions about how you can help. So, an example could be if there is something that you want to use a specific tool uh, to to build or make, and would like to present your process as a use case for. For one of the tool profiles, that would that uh, we consider stuff like that as a part of the little money we've got to give away. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. And yeah, go home and check it out. Drawingbynumbers.org. I'm just gonna pull up. I, I don't have a presentation. I never do presentations. Uh, like I just hate slides. So I'm just gonna pull up a text editor and put up the contact details for people who wanna. Okay, thank you very much. Questions? All right, thank you. Question? I have a tangential question, but it might be for any Google folks out there. What happened to Gapminder? Oh, um, um, I don't actually use the product, so I don't know. You'll have to ask a Googler. <laughs> but uh, I, could, I could ask someone else and get back to you. You'll be in the right place to ask that question to someone else. <laughs>